uh hello oh, i'm just gonna make this video uh really quickly uh it's just gonna be about christians not really walking the walk but doing all of the talk expecting to actually not have to go through any trials or tests uh to prove that they actually are walking the walk not just doing the talk and then obviously because of that uh they have to suffer the consequences for uh god obviously checking what they actually said uh, and holding them accountable to them, claiming to be Christian, claiming to obviously everything that falls under the Christian title, persecution, martyrdom, and everything else uh, in it, uh, they're going to be, you know, obviously God is going to hold them to their words. Uh, and um, deliverance, why deliverance is obviously necessary, uh, and the reality of deliverance and the reality of being a christian uh, and being a disciple so i know i got into it pretty fast like things that i actually have to talk about but uh these types of things themselves are just you know um i, I mean it's kind of sad that this is the only person that you actually are getting this type of message from because realistically the types of people that should be telling you these types these things you should automatically already know what i'm telling you without me having to explain uh, or any type of thing like that because your pastor are, is obviously being led by the holy spirit the holy spirit is telling him these things uh because obviously if he's telling me these things he's going to be telling pastors as well uh he's not a respecter of persons and just because this is not uh this is this is not one of those types of things this is my special work my specific work uh, it, everyone is called to obviously be preaching about this, to bring awareness uh, about this. And obviously, if he's telling me, uh, you're listening to this message, obviously he wants you to, to do the same thing and evangelize uh, and to make disciples out of all nations and just obviously just correct these types of people. Uh, that way, um, you know, the body of Christ is on the same page and, uh, and individuals who claim to be the body of Christ are aware uh, who claim the title, who claim the name, uh, to be prepared for what is actually going to come, uh, and to know for certain that God is definitely not mocked. He's going to hold you to that standard of, of Christian and, and Christianity. So uh, he's going to judge you under the same basis of the things that I'm doing. There's just absolutely no way around it. Uh, if you're not doing the things that I'm doing, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, uh, that shall he reap. So you're obviously going to uh, reap a lot of flesh back if you, and this is going to make it a lot more difficult for you to able, to be able to uh, to pass these tests and these fires because you're obviously not making good use of your time uh, you're more or less more in the world even though you claim to be a Christian you abstain from things and, and the appearances of evil uh, and other things like that um, you know you're, you're, you're doing basically uh, to sum it up, you, you're doing the absolute bare minimum uh, just so you can claim the title Christian and and not really because you're afraid of being cut off. You're afraid of God actually cutting you off because you know you counted the cost. You've seen what's uh, what God is demanding from you, but you're just like, well, I live in America or whatever. Uh, insert the excuse here. That way you don't actually have to uh, go above and beyond to the types of things that a radical Christian uh, or something that you term radical uh, is doing because you realistically don't want to do those types of things. You just want to do the bare minimum and still be saved, uh, which Christ himself obviously wants you. This is a message. This is a warning more uh, of repentance and to obviously do the same works that I'm doing. And obviously for me to do above and beyond and for you as well, but uh, these are baby steps in themselves. Uh, but grace and peace be multiplied to you and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So uh, obviously the backstory of what I'm doing uh, is, okay, first off, I obey the law of Moses, uh, not because anything else. It, it, these things themselves, I don't have a teacher who is obviously teaching me these things. Uh, I just take the Bible for what it actually is. The day of the Lord hasn't happened yet. Christ, or oh God rather, gave us the command to remember the law of Moses before the day of the Lord. Uh, obviously, all this is in context. God knows exactly what he was going to do before the day of the Lord was going to come. He was going to send Jesus. 2,000 years were going to happen. And then, then it was going to happen. God isn't stupid. He doesn't forget. So that, obviously, common sense, these basic 
uh, principles just obviously rule. They govern uh, the scriptures themselves. If they govern our lives, uh, they should be governing your lives as well. Uh, but you obviously let pastors just give you some, uh, because this guy's a theologian, because this pastor is a theologian, you obviously trust this man's words. And so failing to equate that obeying the law of Moses is actually um, holiness, just because uh, of the fact that, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, the fact that the law of Moses tells us what sin actually is. Uh, and so you're obviously not getting into sin. Whoever, obviously Christ gave us a command as well. If you love me, obey my commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, might, will, uh, and and strength. Uh, and the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. 613 commandments. Obviously, you're required to obey those if you actually love God. And on uh, top of just the more uh human side of things you're going to want to obey god more because it's a fruit of salvation nobody's really going to make you waver or make you decide within yourself that you don't actually want to obey god more this is just more or less something that individuals experience on themselves uh for themselves uh without anybody really telling them uh about this, this is obviously a first-hand experience you get filled with the holy ghost uh, this is just a, a craving and an urge inside of yourself to want to obey god more uh, but obviously people, quote unquote, correct you and then uh, you go and they obviously snatch your soul and you go straight into the lake of fire. God, knowing what is actually happening, he gives you graces. He knows that you don't really understand these things and that you're being legalistic uh, instead of just actually being rational. Uh, forever means forever. Obey the law of Moses. You're not putting yourself under the law, but obviously you're still required to obey. Uh, if the salvation is of the Jews first and then uh, the Gentiles. But a lot of Christians just stop right there. They just say, no, no, thank you. Um, I don't actually have to obey the law of Moses. I feel like I'm being legalistic myself and that if I obey the law of Moses, then at some point, um, you know, I'm going to put myself under the law for salvation. I'm going to depend on the law for salvation. It's the same exact principle as you obeying uh, all of Christ's commandments. If you're a Christian, you follow Christ, automatically you're going to obey uh, Christ's commands. At no point whatsoever you're going to rely. Uh, it's not that you're not going to rely on your works. Obviously, these things just are just at face value. You're not going to depend on to depend on your own works for salvation, but your faith is obviously going to produce this work uh, to obviously be obedient to everything that Christ Himself says, uh, because He is your Lord. You're not going to confess Him Lord and then just do whatever you want, right? Uh, so that's a basic uh, biblical principle and a foundation uh, to your actual salvation. Uh, so obviously there is that a bit of law of Moses plus the law of wisdom, uh, which is just um, basically. Man, it's just, it, it takes a lot to explain what the law of wisdom actually is. If you actually are being obedient to, to, the, to the law of wisdom, to the Proverbs and everything else, you're being delivered from things that, from demonic activity and presences that were inside of your life. And you're being refined and you're actually being made holier and uh, purer. But many individuals just take the, the law of Moses, uh, I mean, the law of Moses, the law of wisdom is just like, uh, well, they're more like suggestions. They're not like the other commands, like the, the law of Moses or uh, the law of Jesus Christ that he actually gave to us, that we have to obey everything that he says. So it more or less just gets put in the back pocket. It doesn't really get prioritized. Uh, but they fail to equate the fact that if you're being delivered from demonic activity and from demonic uh, presences inside of your heart, uh, that were actually uh, you living in sin or iniquities and things that you realistically didn't view as sin. Uh, and it wasn't until you actually obeyed uh, and you started actually practicing some of these uh, proverbs and these wise sayings uh, that you actually got delivered from it. Uh, just like how it's written in Ecclesiastes 8, uh, that your face changes and because you actually read wisdom, that obviously you're just going to, be like, oh, well, whatever, the Proverbs are just the Proverbs, I just have to do this, and I just have to do that, uh, the Law of Moses, I don't really have to do that, so, and, and other things like that, that you obviously just, it just begins to be too much for you, uh, and so you, you want to maintain this Christian title, 
uh but you already have recognized that it, it is a lot for you to handle there's a lot for you to do but uh christianity obviously requires you to count the cost to be mature and to really uh judge these situations for what they actually are is it really worth your eternity to not actually hearken to these types of messages and to just do the bare minimum or or i mean when is that ever praiseworthy and when it was when you were living in your in the secular world in, in your daily life uh, obviously these types of things are not praiseworthy. People you typically condemn those types of individuals, like really you're not gonna do this and that. But um so obviously I'm encouraging you to not only that, but these are commands, uh, as well as the overall maturity that comes uh with you actually taking um Christ as your savior. Obviously you're doing this for a heart change, for a reconciliation back to the Father. So okay, those two things obviously I do uh, the third thing itself, uh, so Bell, uh, Jesus Christ, everything he says, uh, a type of the work that I obviously have to do myself. And then uh, I pray for three hours on end uh, and, uh, and do other things that Christ himself obviously wants me to do. And I don't watch television. And, uh, you know, obviously I, I live this life that is centered around the Bible itself and just all biblical principles. I don't wear brand brands name brands like nike or adidas just because of the the sins they're associated with uh i don't buy any products from babylon so this is a standard already that already that god himself is uh, is judging you by that if you're not doing this by now then obviously uh you're probably going to end up well not even probably you're going to end up dying 100 percent uh but um and so this is just a standard that you obviously need to be practicing in and, and so um, which many Christians don't really do. They don't obey the Sabbath. They don't observe the Sabbath. They're just like, well, whatever. Uh, I just have to do this, and I have to. I can I have to go to a church on Sunday, and Sunday is my day. You know, ah, I'm not a Jew. Why would I do that? I'm a Gentile. I have to go on Sunday and other things like that. But uh, realistically, the Sabbath is forever. Um, and uh and that's essentially it so so this is a standard i know for many individuals it may seem high the standard may seem like oh my goodness this seems overwhelming uh but once you actually get to the point where you actually are putting this to practice it, it's i'm going to just obviously tell you it's realistically nothing uh most of it is deliverance delivering yourselves 100 percent if you feel stir it up inside of your heart that you're not actually willing to do any of these things obviously your will is cursed there's something inside of your will that's preventing you from actually being able to uh function properly and to actually want to accept this uh lifestyle and this holy lifestyle uh and realistically to just not really care uh whatsoever so not be so attached and centered around the dietary laws uh or the or the clothing laws or the laws of feeding the orphans and taking care of the needy and other things like that. But obviously, they're just things that are part of the law of Moses. So I know many individuals give you a lot of theological uh, answers as to why you shouldn't obey the the, the, diet, the dietary laws anymore. The moral laws are what we should obey and blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, you can't do any, away with any part of the law of Moses. Christ himself was crystal clear with it. Uh, when he said that, that not one jar or tittle shall pass away from the law until all is fulfilled. I know it, it but fulfilled and abolished are two different words, 100%. So you're going to have to really um, detach yourself from that way of thinking uh, and to just think for yourself and to just obviously think what's best for you. Obviously, obedience, God is not going to, going to condemn you whatsoever. If you choose to obey the law of Moses or the, or the law of the Proverbs or the law of wisdom uh, whatsoever. Contrary, obviously, you're actually following in the footsteps of Christ. This is something that Christ himself did. He was perfect. He was sinless. To say he ate pork or to say he ate shrimp 100% would be calling him a sinner. And so um, so these things themselves are just pretty clear. Uh, they're pretty obvious. And this is just a standard that obviously Christ himself is already judging everybody on. Uh, and the more you obviously are reaping in the flesh or sowing in the flesh by not actually obeying the law of Moses and the law of wisdom, obviously you're going to reap this back. And eventually what ends up happening is individuals end up falling away. Uh, and, and so the 
uh, the resentment towards actually being able to to have to obey the law of Moses and to actually be um, and, and the unwillingness to, to have to obey the law of Moses uh, begins to manifest and, it, and obviously it develops into this anti-Semitism and hatred for, for the Jewish people just because of, uh, of cheeseburgers, pizza with pepperoni, baby back ribs and other things like that. And so it begins to be centered around food and individuals just uh, are, are essentially, this is what is actually happening. You're, uh, you have a soul tie with these food with these foods uh you're attached to these foods you're not actually able to let these things go uh but you could just break all these curses these soul ties themselves and deliver yourselves from doing that and uh to just stop um and to stop making excuses for things that uh realistically it's possible for everybody to do uh, I mentioned this in a comment as well that many individuals is, uh, they replace theology with with actual commandments of Christ Himself, and so I, this is how I worded it. I said the inability f uh, for of individuals not being able to um, uh, to speak in tongues gets replaced by theology, and so um, or the inability to be able to not cast out devils. Uh, gets replaced by theology or whatever insert here. It's just very you know, common. I can't do it, so something is wrong. So nobody can do it. Type of person, type of uh, way of look, uh, way of uh, thinking. And this is how individuals obviously live after they're very discouraged about it. They see other individuals doing it. Oh, it's not that easy. You can't do it just like that. And so jealousy ends up uh, bearing fruit. And this individual ends up getting bitter, uh, envious, unforgiving, uh, self-righteous, and uh, they end up persecuting the types of individuals who actually are able to um, uh, to do these types of works. When these individuals are just telling you that it's as easy as uh, one, two, three, A, B, C, whatever, uh, but um, these individuals don't see it like that. Uh, they're so filled up with discouragement. Obviously, discouragement is the real catalyst that ended up causing these things. And jealousy ends up uh, sprouting up. And they end up getting uh, angry uh, at God for these things. And so they go off and they listen to Justin Peters or whatever his name is. And they're like, oh, cessationism. No, the law of the prophets. There are no prophets. Oh, yeah, this makes sense. No wonder I couldn't do it. Huh? I was worried I wasn't saved. When realistically, they should have just manned up, addressed the situation and just been like, you know what? Maybe I'm not saved. Maybe I don't have the Holy Spirit. There has to be something wrong or, or something along those lines. I mean, by you actually asking these questions is not going to make you at all lose your salvation at any point whatsoever. If anything, if you continue not asking questions, uh, you're probably going to end up dying in all honesty. And uh, realistically, what is the real answer that you need to be at? What is the real answer that you should be Um Oh, how do I word it? Uh, what is the real response or the real well, the response that you need to actually be taking in uh, considering this? Obviously, you need to be asking questions, uh, and it's better to be safe than sorry. Me, myself, I obviously have to cast out counterfeit spirits. This is just a way of life. This is just how life is. You need to be at war, spiritual warfare at all time, uh, which is another thing that Christ is demanding from everyone. If, it, if a person is not actually being engaged, is not engaging themselves in spiritual warfare, um, that is that's the will of the Holy Spirit, and that's something that you need to understand as well. There is a Holy Spirit as well that every person in the body of Christ or any person who calls himself a Christian is to be engaged in spiritual warfare uh, at all times, and there's absolutely no way around it. If these individuals feel like that's not the Holy Spirit's will, um, I doubt they're actually hearing from the Holy Spirit at any point whatsoever. The Holy Spirit is imprinting on the minds of the individuals who are militant that they have to be engaged in spiritual warfare at all times uh, and to not really be uh, have a type of attitude where God is just going to carry me through His grace and all I have to do is just obey His... Obviously, there's a lot of principles inside of the Scriptures themselves. Narrow is the way. Many people will try to enter heaven and will not be able to. And these things just speak for themselves. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Nobody can really take away from any of the things that Christ himself 
has said or to try to develop a, a new interpretation of the things that he said. These things are crystal clear. And if we're going out and you're seeing stadiums, full uh, revival uh, stadiums or whatever they're called, and you honestly believe that, what does it look like to individuals? It looks like the broad path of destruction. Anyone can get saved and, and other things like that. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Uh, and I'm, let's go home. I'm saved. Uh, when in reality... Uh, the Christ addressed these situations specifically, obviously with the intent to ensure that individuals would count the cost uh, and to really um, uh, be prepared, to prepare themselves for the fires and the tests that are actually going to come and to obviously prepare for the Christian life, for martyrdom, for persecution uh, and everything else and from, actually, uh, from God himself separating you from the world. If you have a job, automatically, that um that sells sin like hamburger like cheeseburgers or pizza any of these things uh you're a gas station clerk you're not allowed to sell cigarettes to another person uh or you're an alcoholic some of these things themselves obviously require a lot more thinking like or alcohol you're an alcoholic what is it um you work at a liquor store uh some of these things are just um you need to really think about these things as well. Uh, should you really be working at a liquor store? Probably not. You don't want to be the reason that an individual gets into a, a car accident just because he sold them some liquor that day. Uh, and, and so, but any of these jobs themselves that are selling sins that are under the, the complete uh, contrary to the law of Moses is 100% cursed by God. And many individuals, unfortunately, don't want to view it like that. Uh, and they're just like, nah, Christ will forgive me. He he understands these situations, but realistically, you have to view it as you're being used as as the devil's puppet at that point. And so, the devil is using you to sell sin to another individual. And realistically, you don't know the consequences uh, for uh, that this this individual is going to have to suffer for uh, for them actually. Uh, uh, practicing the sins that they're obviously you just sold them so it's obviously the same principle as you selling heroin to another individual and obviously the parents are going to have to suffer the consequences uh if you sell some bad heroin to a person and they end up dying so uh these things are pretty self-explanatory uh this is blood on your hands if you are selling this type of sin i couldn't make it any more simpler and i couldn't make it any more clear so uh that money is 100% cursed, or you're going to have to just find a new job in all honesty and just work somewhere where it's obviously clean, kosher, uh, and 100% uh, sin-free. Like, I know doctors have it easy. Nurses have it easy. Uh, real estate has it easy, but they could obviously be corrupt. Uh, what other places? Lawyers have it easy, but then they still have to deal with individuals who are obviously guilty, but they have to defend them. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, right? But you could just think about these professions and these careers themselves uh, concerning uh, well, what would actually be honest and true in God's eyes and not really look at these things uh, with your eyes because it's, obviously you're going to justify these things until the day that you die uh, just because it's too hard for you uh, and you already, you already know how these things obviously are. It's not going to be easy actually finding these types of jobs where it is, it's... Um, 100% honest work, but um, it, it's not impossible. So uh, do it. I myself, I'm a painter. I, I landscape. Uh, home remodeling. These things are so easy and so simple. Uh, roofing and siding. These things are, are so easy. You can learn on, on the very first day. And uh, uh, But obviously these things are just honest work and just things like that. But... Um, so that's that side of things, but I needed to bring awareness to that because individuals still are never going to let go of their jobs, and they're never going to actually be able to uh, think how God thinks in that way, how uh, what you're doing is obviously you're being worked as the devil's puppet, and essentially you're being used as a, 
uh, as a means to be able to destroy another individual by the devil by selling them sin. So obviously, hopefully you're able to understand the severity of the situation and the depth of what I actually am trying to say. I know at face value, it seems like, yeah, no, it's pretty bad. But uh, seriously, you really need to uh, really meditate on how bad uh the situation actually is instead of you just like oh no because if you just look at it at face value you're just gonna be like oh well it's like yeah it's bad but god will forgive me for my sin you realistically need to seriously look at it at, at, and really think about it in depth like how, how much uh problems you actually are causing for this person uh because of the severity of of sins and the consequences of sins if you're suffering for generational curses uh, and other things that are in your genes, uh, obviously sin is not something that is a light matter, 100%. Um, generational curses are real. You can read these in the scriptures themselves. Ancestral curses are real. You can read these themselves, and they obviously get passed on to you. This is why so many different individuals look uh, differently. Some of them look the same because they all adhere to the same iniquities that were passed down generation to generation with none of these um, sins, none of these iniquities being atoned for. And unfortunately, because God is so holy, he demands uh, these sins from your entire family tree uh, from you. And so all of your life you're going to have to suffer and pay for the sins of your ancestors. If these sins, these generational curses go unbroken, these uh, sins of the fathers go unconfessed, these iniquities remain unconfessed. So relatively, obviously, there's a solution uh, for this problem, no matter how immense it, uh, it is, but you're still going to have to uh, get up and obviously do some work and deliver yourselves uh, and deliver your genes and to obviously ask for graces to loose these graces inside of your vessels to replace uh, the old nasty iniquities uh, that were affecting and, and plaguing your, your genes. And obviously some of these things cause cancer. Some of these things cause infirmities. This is ex the exact reason why children develop cancer, why children develop uh, infirmities, why children are this and that. The devil tempts you. Uh, and because of the things that are obviously happening inside of the spirit realm, the networking that is going on, uh, and your way of thinking and your outlook, you obviously are um, are very heavily ignorant on what the devil is actually doing. He's tempting you. You think it's you, and as soon as you think it's you, it becomes a hard issue. And when it becomes a hard issue, uh, that it begins to actually be labeled as uh, iniquity. Uh, and so the situation at first was just temptation you could have just said no and the devil would have left you alone you would have submitted to god and and resisted the devil and they would have fled from you but instead you obviously decided that it was you and now the situation just got 10 times worse it's iniquity and and now you're obviously going to be getting paid for this iniquity until you repent and you obviously uh, change uh this way of thinking in this outlook uh so that's essentially what is happening uh, don't be discouraged, but uh, seriously, be bold about these types of things because that that is what's ha that is what's happening. Um, uh, you're being tempted. Jesus was tempted by the devil himself. Uh, he didn't fall into the temptations. You're going under the same exact principles that the devil uh, that the devil uh, that say uh, that the Jesus himself is obviously going under, uh, and so. It's happening to everyone on the face of this earth. The temptation of uh, Jesus Christ obviously exposes what is happening to every human on the face of this earth. You go read it. It's in Matthew 4. Uh, and that's essentially what happens. He didn't fall for the temptations at any point. Obviously, he already knew what law he was breaking when uh, the devil came up to him and started whispering those things in his ear. That shall not put God to the test. I mean, these things, obviously, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit quickens you and, and it tells you what law you could be breaking potentially. And so, um, so yeah, uh, that's essentially what is uh, happening in the spirit realm. Uh, and so many individuals are not really able to equate or understand um, uh, why they're actually going through so much su suffrage. Uh, and obviously the real penalty for sin and the real severity of sin that many individuals just take lightly. They think that they're supposed to just whatever. Uh, they get off scot-free from their whole life indulging uh, in this insatiable lust and 
God is not going to do anything or require anything from them, but in reality, God is going to require uh, it from them, just like how he required Peter, how he brought his iniquity up, how he said that he girded himself, and he went where he pleased, but when you die, obviously, they're going to take you, oh, when you're older, uh, somebody is going to take you and take you where, and take you where you don't obviously want to go, so uh, God is not mocked, you have to pay for all of these sins, uh, and that's it. There's just absolutely no way around it. Um, and that in itself automatically exposes it that you really need to put the pep to your step and deliver yourself uh, from these sins. Or, you know, end up just suffering 100% um, for everything that ended up happening in your family tree. And it seems like a lot. It seems completely unnecessary considering the fact that you could actually deliver yourself uh from past mistakes and from past sins that you obviously didn't commit uh but um individuals are still scared uh they're unaware how to break these curses christ himself became a curse for all men and for all sins and so because of that obviously none of these curses no curse not even the curse of death is going to have power over you whatsoever what's stronger than christ nothing uh so for this specific reason christ was sent into this world uh, to obviously uh, save, redeem, uh, and help man to be able to recon to be able to be reconciled back to God, and so um, I mean, yeah, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy, but um, uh, realistically, it's it's such a a, um, a simple uh, explanation for what is actually happening. I really need to go in depth in it and to actually be able to explain these types of things. Uh, it's just because, obviously, this is the reason is why uh, children end up deformed, uh, why they're, they're born not actually able to walk, and other things like that. And so th this obviously places the emphasis on how serious sin actually is, that these things are not going to be overlooked by God whatsoever, that if he's going to... Uh, curse your child for your family tree sins uh, and he's going to demand uh, payment and um, well payment uh, for your family tree sins through your child then obviously these things are not light matters whatsoever and so you seriously need to consider these um, these judgments uh, to evaluate your life or where in my life am I obviously making fun of God, mocking God that I've gotten away with it for this long and nothing's going to happen to me. And obviously you don't confess that, but obviously in your attitude and your overall approach toward these um all these sinful practices, obviously this is what you're confessing. So uh God doesn't see it how you see it and you really need to equate it, uh, that I can't necessarily overlook any of these sins that I have committed inside of my life. Uh, just because of, you know, if, if little Billy is is born lame, or little Sarah has no eyes, or Kevin is born blind, and, and other things like that, that um, I, I'm in the clear, everything is fine because I'm saved by grace through faith. I mean, that just sounds flat out ridiculous. Uh, it sounds heartless. It sounds very careless as well. And obviously, it sounds very naive uh, towards God's holiness itself uh, for you to just be in that way of thinking where you're just like, oh, well, good thing I'm saved. But man, I feel bad for that person. I mean, you really realistically have to be human about these situations as well as recogni recognizing that you yourself have some curses to break and you have to deliver yourselves for the sake of your children. Uh, to ensure that they obviously are safe. Uh, who's to say that the devil isn't, and I already know he is, uh, working to obviously give your child cancer. He already, he's already doing that. And next thing you know, obviously you're going to wish you took my advice, your child gets cancer. And had you seen the moment that obviously the devil tempted you, uh, so your child would actually end up getting cancer, you obviously wouldn't have fallen into these temptations. But you didn't. You thought life was a game. You thought you didn't have to, uh, be held accountable for your sins and for your ancestors' sins and for your family tree's sins. Uh, and so you just lived your life and you girded yourself uh, however you wanted and you walked wherever you wanted. And, and essentially, God was not mocked whatsoever. So 
and then individuals obviously uh, get in this way of thinking that Satanists and witches obviously can be saved and other things like that through uh, two-hour deliverances. But realistically, that's not going to happen whatsoever. When really gave a um, a sermon, he was actually talking about his first-hand uh, experience about when a witch came up to him or and they wanted to actually be delivered from their occult uh, ties and everything they were obviously doing when they were communicating with demons. They're obviously working in the spirit realms with these demons. And they wanted to actually uh, get away, find a way out and actually get out of that lifestyle. He said, I just want you to just get everything out of me. And they thought it was just going to be quick in like two hours. But he's, he was just like, that's not going to happen whatsoever. You have legions inside of your temple. Uh, and you have princes, chief princes and principalities inside of you. And obviously, you don't have the actual uh, person itself. Obviously, what you have are... are the, little hirelings that are under this principality like leviathan you don't have leviathan the prince or whatever the king inside of your temple but you have uh his hireling inside of it and because it's leviathan obviously it's a curse 100 percent. you're gonna have to break that curse to actually be able to get to um, to cast that devil out or it's just going to resist you it's going to mock you to your face because you're not actually able to get rid of it uh because it knows that it's not going to go away anytime soon because it obviously uh has some sort of um uh, what are those things called the door stoppers it has a door stopper right there and it's like well you're not going to be able to close this door until you finally get rid of that curse and so they're mocking you they're spitting in your face and you're just like god help me and god's trying to tell you he's been trying to tell you for so many years so you're going to have to obviously take action you're going to have to break these curses and you're like i'll just wait on the lord's timing and everything is going to be fine and your whole attitude and your whole approach towards these things is just that god is going to do everything and i don't have to do a single thing when in life has that ever applied to you never obviously all these things in themselves you're gonna to have to get up and find a job you're gonna to have to get up and do this you're gonna to have to get up and do that you're gonna to have to get up and make food or you're going to starve to death you're gonna to have to get up and clean your room or it's going to get dirtier and filthier and, and, and just obviously these things in themselves but people just don't have common sense when it comes to christianity they think that christ is just gonna oh, i just have to hang out right here and and obviously god do your thing and I'm just hanging out, and I got faith in you, and everything's on your timing, and I don't got to worry about a single thing. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this grace. Thank you for this mercy. Hallelujah. I'll praise you until I get my deliverances. Obviously, these things in themselves are good, but God does not want you being stagnant whatsoever. He wants you to send these reinforcements uh, to the areas that you obviously are warring in, that are trying to get you your deliverances, and for you to actually be engaged in spiritual warfare. Uh, at no point whatsoever does he want you just... Uh, waiting on God's timing and, and just not doing anything about it. I mean, just look at it at face value. That just looks so, uh, it just looks so foolish uh, and so careless as well. Uh, well, more careless. Like, you're just like, ah, whatever. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to worry. I mean, these biblical principles are good that you know them, but you seriously need to also apply that principle itself that God himself doesn't want you to, uh, to just be, ah, uh, uh thank you god and, and just things like that because realistically you're prolonging your deliverances and you're frustrating uh christ himself because i mean how old are you that you've lived in the same type of lifestyle in the same outlook you haven't really matured uh and in christ himself and the whole purpose of all of these tests and all of these trials itself is for you to obviously be pruned for you to obviously be obeying christ and through this obedience you obviously are bearing fruit uh, and because you're bearing fruit, your fruits are obviously being perfected uh, in Christ. And your character is obviously being uh, perfected. And and so obviously the, the, the fruits themselves, uh, they form your eternal character. Uh, and so because these things themselves form your eternal character, uh, what actually ends up giving you these fruits is through God's uh, commands and being obedient to Christ's commands. <laughs> And so obviously you see the steps and the requirements that you need to obviously take uh, to be able to perfect your eternal character, to be able to be holy. And these things themselves just begin to be a lifelong process in itself. So uh, you can see why two hours isn't really going to do much for another individual uh, who just wants to get saved like that. Oh, I'm an ex-witch and I just want to get saved like that. And oh, no, I mean, I'm not saying these things are impossible with God. But more than likely, they're only in it to destroy more souls. If you only knew the things that they're already doing in the darkness, 
they're obviously trying to kill children. They're molesting children. They're raping children. They're getting satisfaction from it. These individuals are not uh, in their right minds whatsoever. They're completely degenerate, reprobate. They're the scum of the earth, the worst of the worst. Uh, and then for these individuals, is to just be you're completely naive, a hundred percent. And so uh, obviously, this lifelong process uh, for every Christian who decides to be a part of the body of Christ uh, it is just um, it just needs to be equated inside of your mind, a hundred percent. That uh, obviously, some of the things that when you were younger. Um, they really didn't affect you whatsoever. Or how do I say it? Some of the things that affected you when you were younger, they don't affect you anymore. Uh, with maturity, obviously, comes holiness. With holiness, obviously, comes refining of character. And these things themselves, 100%, just keep advancing you forward and forward. And the more you are consistent in your efforts, the more you actually practice some of these principles themselves. Um, uh the more you look at the heart instead of looking at the face and just obviously other things like that. Obviously, you're, you're growing up, you're maturing, you're not really an older individual. Well, not an older individual. You're not really uh, young and mature and just still stuck in the same ways that you were stuck in when you were 20 years old when you first got saved. What are you realistically doing with your time? You're just wasting it 100%. And so this essentially is the walk this is the christ i mean the christ this is the walk with christ uh it's a lifelong process many individuals still don't cut the cost they still don't think they could get holier and they still think that they could just do this and that's it they just stop themselves there uh but in reality this isn't what it's like whatsoever so um uh seriously hearken to that uh, and seriously, um, recognize and see that this is the overall process that God himself wants you to take into consideration, to start thinking towards and start thinking ahead, uh, and to be, to being prepared, to prepare yourself for these tests, uh, and for these trials, uh, that way you actually are passing them and to ensure that you obviously are, assist, uh, your work is sustaining the heat from the fires because the fires are going to come automatically and whatever ends up remaining is obviously what you're going to be rewarded with did you actually uh build with christ's commands uh because obviously you're going to have to apply christ's commandments and this wisdom in itself uh to the real world and that's just something that you really need to uh prioritize inside of your mind and emphasize inside of your head that you are seriously going to have to put these practices uh and and god's commandments and apply it to the real world it's it's one thing when you are living out uh and you and you're fellowshipping or whatever with other christians and other believers but for you to actually take these things themselves and to actually have to deal with individuals who are not saved with individuals who are f very frustrating to deal with and to actually apply it to the real world that is where the, obviously the real test uh is going to be at so uh don't kid yourselves you guys have it easy you could think about it right now you're like ah yeah you're right now this sounds i'm so hopeful about the future but realistically it doesn't really happen like that christ is going to put you in uncomfortable situations on purpose just because it's just to test the quality of your work and you're thinking whatever i had it good had a long had a good run or whatever and these things themselves are I've been passing these tests, but obviously you go out into the real world and what ends up happening. You individuals get mad. You individuals get frustrated. Oh, God did this to me. I don't want to be a Christian anymore. And you just begin to be a spoiled little brat about these things. Well, the situation could always 110 times be worse. But uh, just because of this inconvenience inside of your life, that it was a lot more, uh, not serious, I would say, but a lot more, um, uh, it was definitely a lot different because it was a lot different. You're already accustomed to actually being, uh, to dealing with the situations that you are obviously dealing with. 
didn't really know realistically how to cope with this uh, new situation, a scenario that, that actually end up coming instead of your path. And so because you don't know how to actually cope with these things instinctively, well, not instinctively, but automatically, the first thing that you... Uh, are used to obviously um, coping with these situations is the first thing you obviously practiced. Uh, and so um, you end up failing these tests and you end up bombing these tests. And so essentially it just show what you were actually doing with your time. You're really making good use of your time. And because of it, um, uh, you didn't pass the test and some of these things were completely passable and some of these tests themselves were completely unnecessary for you to fail but uh, just because of these simple principles you ended up failing you ended up bombing these tests uh 100 percent uh and so obviously deliverance is 100 percent necessary for every person in the body of christ to obviously be um engaged in to ensure that they obviously are uh, disciplining themselves they're being strict with themselves uh they're getting rid of the old they're putting in the new they're putting in graces and they're loosing graces in their vessel and their mind their heart their soul their will and their emotions that way none of these curses none of these presences obviously are affecting them whatsoever when they actually are uh, walking with Christ and being disciples of Christ, as well as replacing the the fiery darts that they have accepted uh, from other pastors and other individuals who obviously have uh, fed them lies and to just obviously be loosing some of those graces in itself for them to be able to understand uh, the scriptures and to be able to replace these fiery darts. Um obviously be loose inside of their vessel and they can be delivered from uh, these chains of the devil that is obviously preventing these individuals from actually seeing um, and actually viewing uh, the gospel with a more deeper understanding because they actually have received, they have actually received more knowledge um, And they're able to receive more knowledge uh, prior to the actual deliverance. So, uh, so yeah, definitely hearken to that. Uh, and definitely see that the reasons why you're not actually uh, reaping much is just because of the fiery darts that you obviously have accepted from some of these false pastors and your misunderstandings and your mistranslations, your legalisms in themselves. These strongholds in themselves have obviously been placed inside of your head strategically to obviously prevent you from being a part of the real body of Christ. But because of the things that I mentioned earlier, obviously these things are, are basic political principles. You are going to be judged by these, uh, these works. And if you're not doing these works, you're going to be judged also. So, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, what I mentioned earlier, it seems like a lot, and it really, it really brings uh, Christ's words uh, to actually manifest. For you to actually be able to see that many will try to enter heaven and are not going to be able to count the cost. Narrow is the way. Many individuals are not, and individuals who actually claim the Christian title are not even doing uh, what I'm doing, but they're still being judged according to the same standard that I obviously am. Um, um, practicing on top of the things that I'm not actually doing that other Christians are doing um, obviously I'm being judged for those works as well so I'm not exempt you're not exempt if you're not doing these works themselves and it's too much for you and it's too hard for you I definitely consider I definitely ask you to reconsider uh, being a Christian and uh, because this is what Christ is going to demand from you, on top of more things that he obviously wants you to do. He obviously wants everybody to be engaged in spiritual warfare. Uh, and if you're not even able to be uh, the type of person that you're able to uh, put your life to the side, to love Christ more than you love your life itself, you don't care what happens to you uh, because... Um, Obviously, you love Christ more. You don't love your life more than you love Christ. You just care about actually obeying Christ and fighting for God. 
then obviously these principles in themselves are just crystal clear in, in, in the scriptures themselves and in heaven. Everybody in heaven is obviously looking at you. They're watching you uh, and they're making sure that you obviously are not succumbing to the test and the fiery darts of the devil and that you actually are ensuring that you be uh, preserved and that you endure until the end. But uh, still many individuals is fail to equate with actually is happening that individuals from heaven are actually watching them and they're actually rooting for them and so they get discouraged when these tests actually come because they don't actually see that um that individuals actually want the absolute best for them in heaven that they're actually rooting for them uh they end up departing from the faith uh and obviously the devil gains another soul so uh definitely uh this is um what is the word encouraging for you to actually be able to uh to continue walking with christ to count the cost and just be like yeah you know what it's not that bad i know my family members are looking at me from heaven and i know i'm going to be able to to pass these tests but still be realistic um you're barely going to get into this. Christ is going to judge you with the same test that I'm going to be judged with. I have more of a chance of actually passing these tests than you actually have a chance of passing these tests. So, um, better late than never. Start as soon as possible, but don't kid yourselves either. You're not going to be the individual who's just going to go, who's just going to blast through these tests. All this is going to be dependent on your efforts and that and what you actually are doing with your time. If you're just like, oh, whatever, I just got to do this and I just got to do that. And uh, I just have to pray for an hour and I just have to get there. Christ is obviously going to demand that you pray for like two hours or three hours at least or two and a half hours, considering the times that we're actually in right now. And these types of prayers, he's obviously going to demand that you actually speak in tongues. Uh, that's something else that I failed to mention. To cast out devils, to heal yourselves, uh, to raise the dead, cleanse the lepers and other things like that. Uh, he's going to demand these things themselves from you as well. Uh, and to actually be engaged in spiritual warfare. Uh, and you're really going to have to take the leap of faith and just actually do these things themselves and to stop listening to theologies and, and to stop listening to other individuals that, oh, well, you have to wait on Christ's timing for this. Is st this stuff is heavily dependent on your own faith. I mean, it's good that you are waiting on Christ's timing itself, but you seriously just have to man up and really do these things themselves because some of these things Christ himself just obviously wants you to take authority and he wants you to take initiative and to take action. But you're just like, whatever, I don't have to do that. I have to wait on Christ's timing because your pastor told you that. That is a straight up lie. Uh, you have to really um, take these things uh by force and i mean realistically that's your authority uh you are a child of the king you are a child of god uh, these things are automatically yours uh you're obviously going to have to show christ that you care but um yeah you definitely can't kid yourselves about these things just confess until Christ, obviously, obviously, you're gonna to have to be a lot more vocal. You're gonna to have to communicate. You're going to have to communicate with Christ Himself. Like I know, I'm going to bomb these tests. I'm not going to fail these tests, but please help me. Obviously, He's going to help you. He Himself already knows that you're going to bomb these tests. You're going to fail miserably. You're going to be mad because of the things that I told you. I made it sound like it's going to be easy, but realistically, it's not going to be easy. I've been there. I've done that. I already knew what it was like to obviously fail and to fall flat on my face whatever just get back up and just obviously don't uh don't waver uh, and don't stop following christ whatsoever i follow my face all the time there's nothing uh it's 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 unpleasant yeah but obviously i don't really have a choice where am i gonna go to to the devil the devil's an idiot that's one of the dumbest things I could possibly ever do just because he's so stupid. He's so limited in every way, shape, and form. 
all the, the things that he himself knows christ himself could just give me just tactics wisdom i don't even have to pray for uh or i don't even have to know exactly word for word what these tactics or strategies are all i could do is just pray and rely on christ it's his tactics and wisdom until i obviously am able to get off these training wheels and he's obviously able to teach me and able to tell me these things or whatever whatever works for him and uh and that's essentially it uh but um he's just such an idiot uh he, he's so stupid for an individual to just go to although he is knowledgeable in itself i mean realistically if you actually begin engage you actually begin engaging yourself in spiritual warfare the type of tactics that witches throw at you is just so ridiculous and so stupid you're just look at this individual like are you seriously trying or are you messing with me are you distracting me from something else and from what you actually are doing or is this really your main plan and so obviously you just forget about it you shrug it off and you obviously just go and you go after the bigger battles and and you go after what these uh individuals are obviously distracting you from well these things themselves are just tests they're trying to t they say they're like nah so let's say that christ himself says that you're saved by grace through faith the same principle that they will obviously that i'm going to obviously address that they, these individuals use all the time no you're not saved by grace through faith that's all they do but you have to use that with different types of scripture like uh oh christ said that you could heal no you can't heal and that's essentially what they do and they do different forms like that uh they send you demons themselves as well to try to get you to listen to to the devil itself and they put you in this trance and while you're in this trance you're a lot more susceptible to the actual lies of the devil uh and unfortunately uh you just either have to wait it out uh and fight and realistically you have to really make that into a habit that you just end up fighting everything and anything because the real reason why these things are coming inside of your life why these trances themselves are coming inside of your life is just because you're not fighting them itself and so these things become reoccurring these things become persistent uh, and you're just like, what do I do, God? What do I do, God? And obviously, realistically, you just have to fight. Um, that's just something that Christ himself is bringing to your attention, that you're not really fighting this side of things, and you're just looking at God, and you're just saying, what do I do? And the answer itself is just obviously do the same thing that you've been doing uh, all day, and it's obviously fight. And to just hit the enemy first before they obviously hit you. Uh... If you see them backing off, obviously that's where you begin advancing. When they see that you back off or they see that you don't fight, that's when they actually begin advancing. They're complete snakes. Uh, they're 100% bastards. And uh, obviously they like to take advantage of the weak and they like to take advantage of opportunities that they could obviously take advantage of. If they see that they can't take advantage of you, it's a wrap for them. And they obviously begin crying uh, and they obviously wish they were dead. And so um, it's realistically that serious for them. Uh, and um, you seriously need to apply the same principles that they obviously uh, use uh, to, to I mean, just recompense their own recompense right back to them, and you advance, and you don't let them take advantage of these opportunities. You don't let yourself be a doormat. I mean, some of you individuals, seriously, that's your name. I know I know that's old. That's like a saying that individuals say. That Do I look like my name is Matt to you? I mean, some of you individuals, look like your name is Doormat. And so it's just so obvious and so blatant. You just completely let these individuals walk all over you like that's your actual name. Like your name is a welcome Matt. Uh, but seriously, uh, that's many individuals is outlooks lives they're sitting here waiting for deliverances from god when god himself wants them to obviously wake up uh to really evaluate what is evaluate what is actually happening and the solution to these problems itself obviously the solution is to actually fight uh, and that's the only solution that there actually is to hinder uh these princes to hinder these principalities to hinder these demons uh and to obviously to force them to stay away from you because these individuals the only way you could teach them is through pain excuse me there is absolutely no way for you to actually be able to teach these individuals is a lesson whatsoever you cannot teach them with words you cannot reach them with words you're going to have to teach them with pain 100 percent 
Uh, and obviously, the less they're able to touch you, the angrier they're going to be. But unfortunately, they're not going to be able to do a single thing spiritually. Uh, some of them may be able to take matters into their own hands where they're going to try to run you over. Uh, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, and it's not what it isn't. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit what else he actually wants to talk about. Uh, so these things in themselves obviously are meant for you to actually um, develop uh, your eternal character, for you to actually be able to be obedient to all of Christ's commandments, uh, obviously because of the hard transformation aspect of things and not because of the rewards that come with it, but uh, because the, you get rewarded for uh, for it with gold precious stones silver because you're building with christ's commandments obviously that's good in itself because you obviously are moving in the right direction you're not really being the type of person that is just like oh well I i'm just here i have these rewards and now what obviously these rewards themselves are proof that you actually have been doing good but and you've making you've been making good use of your times and opportunities while you're walking on earth so uh, that's obviously the outlook that you should obviously have. You should view these rewards in themselves as, yes, I did good. I did a good job with my time. But obviously, just be like, well, there's more important things than these rewards themselves. I don't necessarily care whatsoever for these rewards. All I want is to obviously be still in the same way of thinking where I'm building with all of Christ's commands. I'm bearing more fruit. I'm asking Christ obviously pruned me that I bear more fruit. And because you're asking for Christ to prune you, obviously you're asking for tests and trials. And these tests and trials are obviously going to help you in the long run. They're not going to really be pleasant while you actually are enduring it. Uh, but definitely they're going to help you. And, and um, the easiest way for me to be able to help you pass these tests is just to be imagining uh, all these situations and scenarios that come across in your life. Uh, as you sending it obviously you know yourself better than anyone else you know why these tests come inside of your life some of these tests themselves come inside if you were to send these tests you, it, it would just be like well you need to man up and that's essentially it and you need to seriously just fight uh to stop questioning why is this happening and to just blow past it and to just obviously uh break the enemy's teeth uh and yeah so Um, but um, that's the easiest way for you to actually be able to pass these tests. Um, but realistically, when these tests actually come, Christ isn't stupid. He knows what you're going to try to use. Uh, there's no guarantee that you're actually going to remember this. And he's obviously going to make sure that you forget. And then realistically, it's like, well, let's see what else you got. Have you been building your house on a sand on on a sand uh foundation, or have you been building it on a rock foundation? Have you been building it with my wisdom, or are you or have you been just trying to uh take the easy way and to take shortcuts? Obviously, these shortcuts themselves, I'm learning. Uh, I mean, they they help temporarily. I know they're they're like faith boosters. Uh, but realistically, these shortcuts are not meant for you at all whatsoever to be um, dependent on at all. You're going to have to do these things according to how Christ obviously wants you to do them and according to his liking. And that's it. I mean, these are easy prayers for you to pray in advance towards uh, like, I don't want to depend on shortcuts. I want to do these things according to how you obviously want me to do them. Uh, but I also rec recognize that you want me to take action. You actually don't want me to be lazy and to just be kicking my feet up and that your grace is going to carry me. And although this is true in itself, I obviously have to mature and grow up and be my own man, be my own woman, or and other things like that, or... This way you should be praying. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, but, but yeah, so deliverance is 100% necessary. If these curses are inside of your life, these ancestral sins and generational curses are inside of your life, they're going to hinder you 100%. I don't want you thinking at all that you're somehow going to be able to find some loophole 
uh, in these generational curses and these ancestral sins that because you're saved by grace and I have to deliver myself or because I don't know how to deliver myself, Christ is going to overlook it. You're really going to have to try these things for yourself. And it's realistically as simple as just breaking these crosses, breaking these curses through the cross uh, and um, then casting out the devil by just telling it to go. A spirit of infirmity, go. Or a spirit of... Or all the ancestral curses go into the abyss. Bind them uh, is the easiest way for many Christians to, to bind these demons uh, and then to cast them out of your vessel and into the abyss with their everlasting chains uh, reserved for judgment. And... Uh, and then that's just the deliverance side of things. Obviously, there's uh, the entire earth that you need to conquer. There's giant demons the size of the Sirius Tower. Uh, there's giant demons the size of uh, Mount Everest. And all of these demons themselves have to go. All of them got to go, uh, unfortunately. So you have, obviously you have to loose these demons because these are the ones organizing all of the pedophilia uh all of the the rottenness all of the bitterness the rancor the jealousy the envy the jezebel spirits the woman authoritative over man authority spirits ahab spirits uh cowardice spirits and just obviously the list goes on and on with these types of things uh, and so you're essentially crippling the demons, although this in itself obviously is good that you don't have these strongholds inside of your life. Nevertheless, because they're not affecting you does not mean that they're not out in the open whatsoever. At face value, you can see that it's not good that these individuals are out in the open. They need to be taken out 100% uh, and put them exactly where they belong. Uh, as they just like to take advantage of the weak, the innocent, and especially the ignorant. Uh, so Christ does not want you ignorant about a single thing. He obviously wants you to be uh, investigating uh, and to be asking him, and to be asking him, what am I ignorant on? I need to know more, uh, and please help me. Don't limit him whatsoever. Don't limit his responses that he's going to tell you at, at any point. Um, I mean, these things themselves just seem like commandments. Uh, they're not suggestions whatsoever. You need to seriously hearken to these things. Uh, these uh, commands that I have given you right now, uh, you seriously need uh, to practice and to apply to your life 100%. Or you're going to end up perishing, unfortunately. Uh, these things are 100% serious with Christ. I don't know how or why you even begin to get into that way of thinking that Christ is just whatever and he's a king, but he's going to serve me and he's a king of kings, but whatever, he's going to protect my finances and other stupid abominations like that uh, that I absolutely hate. Uh, so that's not going to happen at any time soon. You're going to have to work and even then there's no guarantee that christ himself is going to protect your finances at any point consider stop being foolish stop being naive to god's holiness and to god's character and what he obviously wants to do uh and to seriously be prepared uh, and to think ahead or you know just risk losing it all i mean there's so many stories in the scriptures themselves of people who have lost it all some of these individuals obviously end up failing end up failing these tests these tests. And some of these individuals like job ended up passing. So um what is it gonna be? Are you gonna practice? Are you gonna be prepared? Are you gonna prepare yourselves? Or are you just gonna be the type of person that's like, ah, God's got me in the palm of his hands. I mean, realistically just look at it at face value and to just seriously cut it out and stop living in that way of thinking hundred percent. You really need to recognize and discern the spirit that's behind that way of thinking because that's essentially what is uh trying to trap you and to try to get you uh as well as just being able to identify the spirits that are behind some of these fiery darts, some of these teachings, some of these worship, and just obviously the types of spirits that are around inside of your times itself. For you to actually be able to uh, 
to deliver yourselves, to cast out, to avoid, uh, and to obviously give these things themselves a restraining order to ensure that they obviously leave you alone, that you are delivered, clean, sanctified, uh, and regenerated according to Christ's commands and Christ's way of living and outlook and perspective. I mean, that was powerful in itself, right? But, yeah, you really need to look at the actual spirits that are behind these. Uh, when it comes to cravings for foods, like, oh, I want some, I mean, not me necessarily. I don't have those cravings anymore. I used to have them in the past, but I got delivered from it, and I just said, oh, and it's disgusting. I started memorizing, uh, well, not memorizing, I started remembering what they actually eat, and I just started finding it absolutely disgusting and repulsive. Um, as well as just looking at the actual texture and what pork actually looks like, it just makes you want to vomit. That stuff seriously looks nasty, but you individuals are so attached to what you actually eat that you don't, uh, and you're, and the fact that it gives you comfort that you're not actually able to see these things for what they actually are. You just look at these foods that you consistently eat on a daily basis and they're just so normalized inside of your head that you don't really recognize that better is out there. I know chicken is one of the things that I actually recognize is really bland and tasteless, and it doesn't really taste like anything. Uh, but obviously, uh, and I obviously have realized I don't really like chicken all that much, uh, just because it tastes like nothing. And then, then you bite into it, and it's just like leathery, and it just is like weird. Uh, and so I kind of grew out of that overall way of thinking how i have to i'm forced to eat this everybody likes chicken mm, chicken love that chicken from wherever but uh it's, it's, yeah don't eat popeyes that's a sin it's in direct uh contrary to a lot of moses because it mixes milk and ch and meat but yeah you're really gonna have to develop a mind for yourself and really investigate what you actually like and not what you were conditioned to eat, what you're conditioned to like, and what you're just so accustomed to, obviously, being fed. The narrative that everybody obviously hears and everybody adheres to, and seriously, just think for your own, for yourself. Uh, do you really like chicken as much as everyone likes chicken? Or what is really the, the issue and what is really the problem? As well as to seriously question everything that you do, all of your actions, and just, uh, I know this is one of the things that many individuals obviously say, this is something that's common I see, is to deconstruct uh, your outlook and your way of thinking. Uh, that's something that I did in the past. I deconstructed everything that I obviously had thought, and I stopped being, I started regurgitating so many of these catchphrases, so many of these things without actually uh, knowing the real meaning behind why they actually are said uh, and overall why I actually like some of the things that I actually like. I obviously started, develop, started to develop a mind of my own and after that I obviously became more of my own person. I began to obviously, I began, I began to actually, <laughs> I began to actually see what I actually liked and what I don't like and just obviously things like that. And you obviously need to take the same journey in itself uh, to discover and to just detach yourself, to destroy these soul ties, and to uh, to cut these soul ties uh, to what you are actually attached to. And to just, this is all for the sake of holiness, and all for the sake of cleaning yourselves, for refining yourself, uh, and for making yourself uh, wider, uh, and cleaner and yeah stop eating Popeyes KFC is good KFC is fine but some of their fries obviously mix uh, with um, I mean this is obviously through um, through research you're gonna have to research the type of food that you like and to see if the uh, if they actually are kosher, because some of them that use shortening from from pigs that's a sin. And other things like that, and 
obviously the overall theme of this is to not be lazy, right? You cannot at all afford to be lazy whatsoever because of the sins that you're ignorant of. You can't at all be buying any of these consumer goods that are causing your depression and you don't even know where it's coming from. You can't afford to do any of these things. You can't afford to be ignorant whatsoever. And hopefully you're, you're able to lay that to heart and you're not just looking at these things like, wow, yeah, no, that actually seems really good, but you actually begin practi practicing these things right uh, away. That is a grace in itself. Uh, don't worry, the devil hates it when you start doing these things because he knows there's actually, you have more of a chance of actually developing it into a habit. Um... And then if you would have just listened and just been like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, not that you're actually going to develop the, these types of principles and these types of virtues into habits. More than likely, no. It's going to take some more efforts, some more uh, applications. And seriously, how bad do you want it? I mean, I do like the biscuits, though, from Popeye's. They don't really have any meat or anything like that, but oh, sorry guys, kind of caught me in a fat moment. Uh, and as the Holy Spirit, what else he wants to say? He said, "No, you're gonna have to seriously apply yourselves and be diligent with everything that I actually have mentioned." Or why bother? You're just going to end up failing and bombing these tests either way. So you're seriously going to have to uh, apply yourself diligently. Write these things down. If there's a specific part that I that I mentioned that just resonated with you, that it just seemed good, or it's like, oh, yeah, I feel like that's for me. Or it's like, yeah, I definitely need to put that to practice. I noticed that I used to do these types of things, but I didn't really have the wording to actually be able to... Um, to say what I was experiencing, but you put it into the, into words. It's like, yeah, I definitely need to write that down. Definitely do that. Definitely reread these things. Don't be lazy. The devil is 100% going to target that part of your life. That you never look at these things ever again. That you never look at these notes ever again. That you hear this once. That you got it in the bag and everything is going to be fine and dandy. Uh, that is a flat out lie. The devil is just trying to... Um, I'm trying to destroy your soul. He's just trying to encourage you to be lazy. He's trying to encourage you to not take the right measurements and precautions. And he's obviously trying to encourage uh, his own philosophies and his own fiery darts. That way he could actually gain some sort of a foothold and leverage in it. Because Christ sees these things for what they actually are. He's going to see if you obviously are going to take... Uh, these things into consideration you're going to actually prepare yourselves for the future you're going to lose these graces you're going to ask him how to lose these graces you're going to ask him how to deliver uh, and obviously you're going to fast you're going to inquire you're going to keep living in these types of principles all these things are exposed and open for christ as well as he can see into the future he's all knowing he can see what, what you're going to do with your time where you fail at and everything else in between so uh, you could just ask him what he could actually see in the future, uh, and, and yeah. He might even show you what he's actually seeing in the future, so there's that, right? Um, it's not gonna cost him anything, he's all-powerful, all-knowing, endeavor-present, What else? And so yeah, definitely need to consider that as well. Everything that I mentioned about the devil, what he's actually trying to do, should open your eyes to uh, the seriousness and the severity of the situation of what is actually going on. If he's going to be going coming at you specifically with the intent to ensure that you never put any of these things to practice, then obviously you need to really take this as serious as he 
he's taking it serious and even more serious than that. And the only means and the only way for you to actually do that is through Christ himself, through grace to deliver yourselves. That's essentially what it is. If you end up failing, it's because there was some demonic foothold, some demonic leverage. If you end up passing, it's all 100% because of grace. These things are basic biblical principles. Um, but the way, obviously, is worded, the knowledge that's, that is worded with, obviously, you're able to understand why some of these things are obviously said. Instead of you just constantly regurgitating these things, I really need you to obviously get out of that habit as well. Um, stop regurgitating scriptures that individuals often regurgitate. I know you have a general idea of these things, um, but you really need to sit down and ask yourselves, what do these things really mean? And that is honestly when you uh, begin to mature and when you actually begin to grow in Christ. Because if you continue just living in this way of thinking where you just have this general idea, but without really asking about these things themselves, um, that's where you're obviously going to be at for the rest of your life until obviously you begin to ask questions like, what does this actually mean? What is the depth of this? Uh, as these are the types of things that you're going to learn in heaven. When you are in heaven, um, you're going to really understand the depth of grace. By grace through faith, you understand what that saying truly means. Uh, and obviously, nobody's able to deceive you whatsoever because you're in heaven. I already have explained what these things actually meant. The reconciliation, the overall plan of salvation, the perfect plan of salvation, how there's no free will whatsoever because everybody obviously is uh, predestined to either heaven or hell. Uh, and there's absolutely no way around that. Because of that, although you have the choice, 100%, you're going to choose the same path somehow because of your actual nature itself, because of your actual work itself, and because of you're just following the same script that obviously Christ himself had ordained. If Christ was already sent, if God already had a plan for the redemption of man from before, from the time of Adam and Eve, he obviously has your script also. He obviously has your script also, so... You're not exempt whatsoever. That should automatically tell you Christ's person, the Father's person, and the Holy Spirit's person. They're the ones orchestrating this. They're obviously doing all of the work 100% to uh, to fulfill the Father's perfect plan of salvation. And that's essentially it. predestination and foreordination accept your foreordination in, in god accept your predestination in god or why bother um complaining or murmuring when you're burning in the lake of fire you don't even bother taking it that's essentially it some of you individuals seriously need a uh um a kick in the right direction i guess uh and some of you individuals i could care less but um <laughs> If we already know there's going to be a rebellion after Satan is released, what does that realistically tell us? Foreordination, predestination. All of these things are already known beforehand. They're not going to surprise anyone with any type of attack and other things like that. So that's the Holy Spirit. What else he wants to say? Let me say that about sums it up. Spiritual warfare. Fight. Fight the battles that you don't usually fight, don't typically fight, don't acknowledge that you should be fighting, don't recognize you, you should be fighting, uh, stop wasting your time, think ahead, uh, especially, emphasize thinking ahead inside of your mind, please, uh, just because this solves so many problems, if you would just think ahead, it's not going to solve all of your problems for sure, but definitely it solves the majority of your problems because you're organizing these things for yourself through crisis counsel, through crisis direction, and direct things in the spirit realms. Which brings me to another teaching itself. The spirit realms, 100% there's a networking happening in, happening in the spirit realm. Uh, I mentioned this in the past video. 
uh, is the one before this one. How they go under the guise of, uh, oh, I mentioned that in this video as well, of temptation. Uh, that they try to tempt you, that it is actually you. And if you end up falling and taking the bait, obviously you end up falling into sin. And so you end up, it ends up exposing your iniquity. And so these are the types of tests that you need to be able to withstand to and to just hold firm and to ensure that you obviously are not going to uh, submit to the devil, but actually submit to God. Because, I mean, it's realistically so easy once you actually know what is actually happening. You just recognize that you, all you're doing is hearing thoughts and that anything that has to deal with anything contrary to what is Christ's commands and what is the law of Moses and the law of the Proverbs, automatically that's when you're being tested and you're being tempted to see if you actually are going to fall into sin or, or are you actually going to put these practices to, uh, to practice or to work. Um, but easier said than done. These things get a lot more meticulous as obviously you begin growing and maturing in Christ. These things begin to get a lot more complicated, definitely. At first, these things begin to get easy. They're easy. They're just like, oh, yeah, I obviously love my enemies. Uh, but then down the line, loving your enemies takes a new form. And you're just like, oh, man, what do I do in this situation? And so, uh, obviously, you need to really prepare uh, and to seriously ask Christ to prune you and to prepare you for these tests because you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. All these things themselves, when you actually prepare yourselves, obviously you're doing it by sand. But if you actually are asking Christ to prepare you, you obviously are praying, you're loosing these graces to prepare you and everything else according to Christ's liking and reliant on Christ and being a uh, being and abiding in Christ. And obviously you you have more of a chance of passing these tests. But Christ has... Um, you're not going to get away with any of the sins that you obviously have committed in your life. You are 100% going to have to pay for every single sin in this life and, and the next life. That's scary. But you don't have to pay for the ancestral sins, though. That's a good thing. Uh, you could be delivered from them, but definitely for your life. Those are the ones that you get held accountable for the most. But some of the sins you're suffering because your grandma was a witch. Some of the sins you're suffering for because your great uncle was a pedophile. Some of the sins you're suffering for because you're... Uh, your ancestors were homosexuals or sodomites or whatever the case may be you're still suffering for the sins of your ancestors but if you already have broken the curses these things were already physically manifesting your genes and genetic wise hereditary forget about it don't listen to the secular lie all we have is generational curses virtues and these things themselves obviously get passed down generation to generation and the sins of the fathers, all these things are the physical manifestation and proof of God's sovereignty, God's laws, God's commands, and God's justice and judgment. And that's essentially it. But it's on you and whether you take Christ's salvation, how firm you are in the truth, and what truth actually is. Uh, and how often you obviously deliver yourselves from these things to ensure that you obviously are completely purged from these sinful practices in your family tree specifically. Amen. And then you still have to suffer for the consequences if you're married, uh, for your wife's his family's tree because the two families become one. It's the same person. And just like how Christ said in the beginning in Genesis, he said the two flesh become one. And honestly, you two are the same exact person. You're going to have to suffer for the same sins, regardless if you committed the sins that their family committed or if whoever committed. 
or your wife committed or your husband committed. You can find mercy because obviously Christ is rational, but obviously you're really going to have to. How much do you love your wife? How much do you love your husband? I pray that the graces are loose inside of your vessel, as well as uh, the curse of you being naive be broken. Now you're actually able to cast this devil itself out of your temple. As well as the curse of laziness and your curse of just your approach towards uh, salvation be broken. And any other curses in between these things themselves. And the graces be loose that we actually stay delivered and that we actually are maintaining uh, and walking in healthy habits to uh, to ensure that you obviously stay delivered. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Uh, yeah, thank you uh, for listening. I know this is a kind of lengthy video. I explained the severity of the situation, the severity of sin. Be realistic. Uh, these things are going to take time. Your Christian walk is not a two-hour long deliverance. These things themselves are just you holding yourselves uh, in discipline, maturing, reaching the plateau, looking back, shrugging off at the things that you used to be so uh, bombarded with, harassed with, and occupied with, going up, uh, reaching the plateau, looking back, and obviously maturing and, and being pruned, and growing in grace, and... Obviously, this is just the overall Christian uh, walk. He, he matures you. Obviously, what do we do with plants? We prune them. That way they bear more fruit. It's the exact same practice that Christ himself uh, does in every single Christian in the body of Christ. Don't kid yourselves. If you call yourself a Christian, he's going to hold you to that name or he's going to cut you off. Or you're going to cut yourself off because it's going to be too much for you. I've been seeing it all day. I've been seeing it everywhere, all month, all year. Uh, how individuals who used to be Christians, they're not Christians anymore. Uh, individuals who used to hold themselves to more disciplined uh, lifestyles and more holy lifestyles, they're not living as holy as they used to. I mean, obviously Christ himself is shaking these individuals' his lives, ensuring that the unshakable remains. That is a practice in itself that you obviously need to recognize and keep inside of your head. That Christ is shaking everything that is shakable. That way the unshakable remains. So if you end up feeling like you're going bald, well, unfortunately, that was the shakable. If you end up feeling like you are going to lose your mind, unfortunately, that was the shakable. So that is all on you. The only thing you can realistically do is just pray, humble yourself down. And really seek the Lord and really get closer to God. Uh, really fear the Lord and to really fear the Lord. Or why bother? Don't doubt. Doubt is a sin 100%. If you, can, if you begin to doubt God's word you're, or you begin to actually uh, fear the devil, you are doubting God's word and you actually fell into the sin of cowardice and doubt at the same time. Fear the Lord. You doubted God. You doubted what God's power would be and, and His miraculous power as well. Maybe God won't do it. All right, thank you. Uh, I pray that these graces are loose inside of your vessel for you to actually be able to mature and grow in the Lord as well as any curses that would actually be able to hinder you uh, be broken and the devils be cast out. In Jesus Christ's name. Um, amen. Thank you. Be blessed. Holiness and discipline are vital and necessary. As well as any other graces that you're desirous of, be loose inside of your vessel. If there's any curses that are going to prevent that from actually happening, I pray that they're broken by the cross. Uh, and that obviously the blood covers your sins, that you're forgiven for these sins, and that the blood covers this side of your life, uh, and the devils are cast out, that way there's no legality, because there's no sin, you're 100% forgiven, uh, so you're 100% delivered, and don't forget that, 
uh, don't let these devils guilt you that because you've been 100% forgiven that you can't, that you have to be 78% delivered. That is a flat out lie. Fear the Lord. Don't doubt. Mm. Uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you more graces to be able to understand this message as well as the grace to not actually be lazy towards your salvation and to not be lazy toward, towards uh, these lengthy videos and these teachings on my page and all over uh, the earth because the devil is definitely cursing you 100%. That way you don't actually read any of these, uh, these messages that are meant to edify you. The devil knows. He he's obviously doesn't try to be ignorant he maintains this way of thinking that he can't be ignorant ever or it's going to be his life or he's going to lose all of it is 100 percent. he's doing his own work if he ends up passing and succeeding it's all because it's part of god's perfect plan of salvation and if he ends up failing he's probably going to throw a temper tantrum because he's a giant brat uh um, but still part of God's perfect plan of salvation. Don't be discouraged, but seriously recognize the severity of sin. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.